Hey guys, my name is Robin from Consistent Life Balance and in this video I would like to talk a very important topic. You need to be deeply aware about it if you want to create optimal health and vitality. The topic of today's video is the bowel transit time. I thought about making a video series where I talk about it and also about um, other things relating to our colon and how our whole digestive system works. Now I would like to give you an outline what you will discuss today. At first, we will start with a definition of the bowel transit time. What is it actually? Then we will continue with our digestive physiology and anatomy. And then we will talk about some basic knowledge about the bowel transit time. And lastly, I will give you a general rule. Okay, let's start with the definition. The bowel transit time refers to how long it takes for ingested food to go through your whole digestive system including complete elimination out of the body. So when you eat something, it comes in through the mouth and goes through your whole digestive system out through the anus. So for the next point, I would like to give you some background about the digestive physiology and where our anatomy is coming from. So every species on this planet is constituted with a specific kind of digestive anatomy. We can classify these anatomies into five main groups for land animals. We have the carnivores, we have the omnivores, we have the herbivores, the granivores and the frugivores. There are many differences between these anatomy groups in most areas of their physical constitution. But when we only look at the digestive physiology, the major difference is the length of the colon or it also gets called the large intestine. This major characteristic of the digestive tract tells us which food a certain species is supposed to eat. So it's very, very important. The length of the colon and the whole digestive system tells us which food a certain species should eat for optimal health. The colon of a carnivore is very short, three times as long as the body. The digestive system is ideal for digesting high amounts of meats and other animal foods because their short colon allows them to quickly eliminate the waste products of the putrefying flesh they are eating. Animal foods in general putrefy very quickly and therefore they also need to be excreted quickly. Otherwise the species retoxifies itself. Omnivores have a slightly longer colon but still are designed to eat meats and other fast rotting foods. A granivore has a digestive physiology by which he can eat raw hard seeds nuts and grains, as the name already um, says or implies. Herbivores have a colon which is up to 24 times as long as their body. For example, the sheep has the longest colon in comparison to the whole body. They are perfectly designed to digest large amounts of plant matter in their long intestines. They need a long bowel transit time to completely ferment, break down and absorb the nutrients from the high fibers Foods like grasses, leaves, vegetables and roots they are eating. Finally, our last group are frugivores. Their colon is about 7 times as long as their body and they have a much longer colon than a carnivore and a significant shorter colon than a herbivore. Their digestive system is made for simple to digest foods such as fruits, soft vegetables and some nuts or seeds. You can decide to which group the human physiology belongs when we now compare the different digestive anatomies. I think it is pretty obvious that we best fit for frugivorous physiology. We are not carnivores, we are not omnivores, nor herbivores. Regarding the granivores, I think it is obvious that we are not able to digest raw grains. We have to cook them to make them palatable. And that does no other species on this planet. Yes. Um, I'm not saying that we should only eat fruits, but I just want to show here from where our digestive system and physiology is coming from. And as I already stated, I would only look here on the digestive system and the, especially the, the large intestine because you should know that there are many other differences between these physiology groups like the face, the eye position, the jaw and the teeth, the lips, the tongue, 
the blood pH, the urine pH, the mechanism of cooling, the behavior of drinking, the placenta, the liver, the processing of cholesterol, and finally the feet. So many, many differences between the five groups. Our next point is some basic knowledge about the bowel transit time. The average bowel transit time of the civilized person nowadays ranges from 65 to 100 hours. I even know many people who go only one, once, once a week to the bathroom having a bowel movement. It is crazy and I also have to be there myself so I know how it is to have this happening. The food you eat need about 6 to 8 hours to go through the stomach and the small intestine. For the rest of the time it sits in the colon until it gets eliminated. If you are putting the right kinds of foods in your body, you have a proper gut microbiome and providing that your system is healthy as well as clean, then you can dramatically decrease your bowel transit time to ideally 8 to 12 hours. So maximum 24 hours and the foods you are eating should never take longer than one day to go through your whole digestive system. Why is it so important that our bowel transit time is short? This shortening of the bowel transit time leads to less putrefaction, stagnation and retoxification. Now this is very important, you have to notice. When your bowel transit time is too long and things start stagnating in your body, not everything comes out anymore. We begin accumulating waste matter in ourselves and as John Rose says, we create our own little cesspool in our bellies. <laughs> The toxic byproducts of this putrefaction reach all parts of the body through the bloodstream and can therefore affect pretty much all areas of our health. It is very logical that this cesspool is a perfect environment for bad bacteria, parasites, yeasts, worms and fungi. Because of that every single cell in your body gets affected and many different diseases start to manifest. Of course, this condition weakens your whole entire system. For the last point of this video, I would like to give you a general rule. The shorter the bowel transit time, the less food can potentially putrefy and retoxify yourself until it gets eliminated. Some signs of retoxification in the colon are for example constipation, headaches, flu-like symptoms, bad breath, lethargy, depression, anger, nausea, brain fog and bad mood, but there are also um, many more symptoms that can manifest. It is very important to keep the bowels regularly moving. For each meal there should be one bowel movement daily. So let's say you eat two to three meals, then there should also be two to three bowel movements every single day. Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something new. As I already stated in the beginning, this was only the first part of a video series about bowel transit time and how our whole digestive system works. Please make also sure to watch the next upcoming parts where we will discuss how constipation gets created and why it is so bad. Also how body odor and skin conditions are related to it. And we will also talk about the tragedy in nowadays world as well as the diet and food choices which are appropriate for our digestive physiology and bowel transit time. Thank you for watching the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it again and have an amazing day, see you, peace. Sorry I kept you waiting Forever